There are two main ways to get a passport. You could be a citizen of a country and fill out a little paperwork, or you can buy one. As passports become the latest luxury item for the ultra-rich, it's worth asking, why do we have passports? What do they do and where do they come from? The first mention of a passport of any kind comes from, believe it or not, the Bible. In the book of Nehemiah around the year 450 BC, Passports in one form or another were also used by the Western Han Dynasty in China and the Ottoman Empire. Shakespeare uses the word passport in Henry V. Letters known as safe conduct were mentioned in Parliament during Henry's reign. That's essentially what passports were. A request from your home base to those in your way to allow you safe passage. Benjamin Franklin issued the first American passport. Well, kind of. He wrote a one-page letter, entirely in French, called a passeport, politely requesting passage for a diplomat. For 100 years after the American Revolution, passports were rarely used to cross borders. They were more of a status symbol, and married women were simply listed as and wife on their husband's passport until the 1920s. By World War I, the United States and countries in Europe began demanding that everyone have a passport to cross a border, including married women. The League of Nations standardised passports between the world wars and even issued something called a Nansen passport for stateless people between 1922 and 1938. But as passports became more ubiquitous, so too did immigration quotas and complex laws that aim to keep people from specific places out. Here's how it works. Each country makes deals with other countries for their passport holders. For instance, anyone with an EU passport can freely go anywhere else in the EU, but someone from, say, Azerbaijan will need a visa to get to Italy and take that picture pretending to push over the Leaning Tower of Pisa. In that way, some countries' passports are considered more powerful than others. For instance, if you have a passport from Finland or Luxembourg, you may enter 127 countries without a visa and 41 countries by getting a visa upon arrival. But if your passport happens to be from Afghanistan, you can only enter five countries visa-free. As of 2019, the most restricted passports to have all come from Muslim nations. Iraq, Syria, Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen and Sudan join Afghanistan as having the most restricted passports. Countries decide who may enter their borders, not based only on need or criminal activity, but on where that person happens to have citizenship. Then there's the whole matter of people without any passport at all. According to the United Nations, there are more than 10 million stateless people in the world who are often denied passports and therefore the ability to move around the world. And today, there's no version of the Nansen passport. On the flip side of the coin are the estimated 20,000 people a year applying for second passports, generally the wealthy looking to move themselves and their money more freely around the globe. Rich people can use their newly purchased citizenships to create tax havens or renounce their original passports and avoid taxes entirely. Costs range from $100,000 to $2.8 million depending on which nation's passport you're trying to buy. In most cases, that's cheaper than buying a second-hand yacht. For most places, the payment comes in the form of property investment. St. Lucia and Granada accept straight donations to their sovereign wealth fund. These investments are separate from the more traditional way of acquiring a passport, which is permanently moving to another country and waiting the requisite years until you qualify for citizenship. And the investments are actually a major source of income for some countries. Selling passports makes up between 14 to 30% of the GDP of St. Kitts and Nevis. Just think about that. Passports and with it citizenship are made out to be sacred things. They classify us, give us an identity, divide some of us and unite others. But what does it mean when someone rich can simply buy entry? As the wealthy use second and third passports to move freely across borders, others, simply based on citizenship, cannot.